Voy hasta quitar los lentes. <risa> ¡Wow! ¡Cooperstown! ¡Estamos aquí, mi gente! Before everything, I want to thank God for giving me the opportunity to be here today and for giving me the joy of being able to travel this path. This path that had allowed me to be here today and hopefully inspire everyone to believe in yourself. Thank you, dear God, for giving me the opportunity and strength all this year to stay strong and keep my feet on the ground through ups and downs and all the sacrifices that I had to overcome to be able to be here with you today. Just like you guys know, I'm real. And I'm going to talk to you guys in English and Spanish. Pa que mi gente me entiendan. Todo eso viene del corazón. This is a such an incredible day, an incredible honor, and I'm so humbled to be on this stage right now. The last six months, I received a special phone call to be elected to the Hall of Fame. I've been thinking about how I got here to this stage, Cooper Sound today. I've been thinking about my life, my career, and most of all, the people that believe in me. I've also been thinking about the lesson I've been thinking from their support and the power that we all have to make and the possibilities different in this world. I want to thank the baseball writer for making me the first designated hitter in the history of Cooperstown to be selected in the first ballot. You guys got it going on. Thanks, guys. To Major League Baseball, for all the support you have given me throughout my professional career, I really appreciate it, MLB. Love you. This game is so important here in America and around the world. Thank you for all the support you have given baseball as a sport. So that is continue to be part of our culture and part of the heart of all the fans worldwide. Cooperstown. I would also like to thank the village of Cooperstown for opening your door to us, especially to the Hall of Fame. Jane, Josh, Sheda, I mean Chester, sorry, and Whitney, thank you very much for, the, for being able to have us here and treat my family and everyone else the right way. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would also like to thank all the members of the Hall of Fame present today. My respect always to all of you. Thank you for being here. It's an amazing honor to be part of this elite group that you already are. My family, mi primos y hermanos, Albani Ortiz, Yacili, Eloy, Bambán, Robert, Manolo, eh, ¿quién más me falta? Eh, todos los tigres que son míos que andan por ahí. U ustedes saben que sin ustedes esto nunca hubiese pasado. Mi compadre Luis, ¿qué fue? No te voy a dejar fuera del paquete. <laughs> Sabe que lo quiero mucho, mis hijos de Angelo, Alex, Jesse, David. You guys know that without you guys, this would never happen. You guys were the engine that started this model every day for me to get it going and keep on going. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for being there for me always. Just like your mother, Tiffany Ortiz, wherever she had us right now. Thank you very much, Tiffany, for it. Supporting me during my career. You are amazing. Thank you very much. Mi gente en la República Dominicana. Claro que. La República Dominicana, mi tierra. Wow. La tierra que me vio nacer. Muchas gracias. Gracias por su gente que me ha cogido siempre como uno de sus hijos favoritos y me ha brindado su apoyo paso tras paso a través de mi carrera. Gracias por su música, que me ha llenado de vida, alegría, 
sabor todos los días. A los tigres del clojado que estaban conmigo ahí desde cero. Gracias por, por esa, bueno, por aguantar mi tanda que yo le daba diaria a cada rato por su comida, su buena vibra, por su alegría y por su espíritu de guerra que ha sido el mismo mío. Gracias siempre por ser Quiqueya la Bella. Nada comparado a eso. Presidente Luis Abinadel, gracias por mandar la comitiva que está aquí apoyándonos hoy. Yo sé que usted es una persona muy ocupada y de mucho trabajo y que está tratando de mejorar lo que se llama nuestro país. Sé que no está aquí presente, pero gracias por mandar el grupo y su espíritu. Sé que está con nosotros aquí también. I want to thank the United States of America from the Battle of my heart as an American citizen who welcomed me with open arms since I was practically a child and gave me the opportunity to develop and fulfill all my dreams and then some more. Thank you very much, U.S. And to all of my American friends, consider this as an open invitation to visit my island, the Dominican Republic. Send a special play, but we have a lot of good and happy people, beautiful beaches where you guys can go when you guys are freezing here. So show up in the Dominican. Before I was Big Papi, before the Red Sox, before the Twins, I was just a kid playing ball in the Dominican Republic. To all my coaches from winter ball, minor league, and the big league, I could not have done it without you. It was a guy named Ramon de los Santos, Pintacora La Uva, and Fernando Arguelle, who was calling me and signed me to the Mariners, to the Seattle Mariners when I was only 16 years old. They saw something in me, and they fought for it. Once I was in the United States, another guy, another gentleman named Jim Scotland, the Mariner, the Mariner minor league coordinator, make a huge impact on me. Also, Jim Beatty, who is also here somewhere, that's another guy who make a major impact on me as a player development, development director. And then there was a guy named Mike Goff, who was my manager, who taught me and in in, in our entire team so much. He always used to tell us, you have to go hard, can't take things for granted. He was hard on me, but I know it was coming from a good place. On the last day of the season, he told me, the reason why I was so hard on you is because out of all the players here, I think you are the one that can have an amazing career in the big league. Go and get it, big boy. Thank you, Mike. When I was traded to, when I was traded to the Twins, there was two guys in the minor league system that helped to build my confidence. John Russell, my manager in the first state league, and Al Newman, who was my manager in AA, the same year that John Russell was my manager in the first state league. These two guys built up my confidence so much that I end up in the big league that year. I learned so many big things from them. These two guys were father figure and made me believe that they, and, and, and they work with me every day. Because they believe in me, I wanted to show them that I could do it too. I also had to thank the Minnesota Twins for bringing me into the big league. Even though it didn't work out the way everybody expected, I learned from my time there that once I get my shot in any other place, I was going to work hard to never let it go into the last day I played. To all of this year new Hall of Famer, I want to congratulate you. It's an honor to be in this stage with you. Mr. Tony Oliva, Mr. Jim Cobb. Those guys always were around when I was with the Twins, giving us good advice. Congratulations to the two of you. And there is another Twins, and there is another Twins Hall of Famer that I got to know really well, and I miss him so much, Mr. Kirby Pocket. He taught me so much about the game, and I, I mean, he gave me so many advice, and he was so wonderful to me, that when I went to Boston, I started wearing his number, number, 20, number 34. God bless you, Kirby, whatever God have you.
Stay in the Red Sox. From Mr. John Henry to Linda Henry to Tom Warner to Larry Lucchino, Phil Morse, who was there when I came to Boston, and of course, my main man, Sam Kennedy. I can thank you guys enough for building me up and supporting me throughout the years. I also want to thank my man, Jack McCormick, who was the traveling secretary at the time while I played, and my little sis, Pan Cam. That organization made me the man that I am today. They educate me about the game, but they also educate me about my life. Community service, connecting with people, the Jimmy Fund, the Children Fund. That's why I started the David Ortiz Children Fund that have provided life-saving heart surgery for children in the Dominican Republic and New England. I want to thank everyone that worked so hard in my foundation to make this happen. All the stuff that as a player you get connected with, now that I'm not a player, I know what that means. The impact that we have, I know what that feels like now, to have someone supporting you at the hospital. There are a few people who make it possible for me to become a Red Sox. I got to thank my man Dave Jowes who watched me playing winter ball while he was the manager for the Lycee in the Dominican Republic. And the minute the Red Sox call him, he shows up showing me some love right away. Thanks, Dave. I also want to thank this guy right here, who you also know, number 45, mi compadre Pedro. Tengo que darle las gracias porque él ha sido para mí un hermano, un consejero, un abogado, hasta plomero ha sido mi compadre para mí. <laughs> mi compadre, lo amo con locura y yo me puedo pasar el día entero hablando de usted. I can talk about Pedro all day long. I'm going let go now. And my agent, Fernando, who has been with me since I was 17. Fernando, man. I can tell you no more, man. I can ask for no more. Combined with my man, Diego, who also was my agent at the time. You guys have been incredible. I love you guys. When I first came to Boston, I have a manager named Grady Little, who was the manager at the time. And my very first bat against the twin during spring training, I tried to move a runner over. And I thought when I got back to the dog, everybody was going to high five me. Everybody stay sit. And the manager put me to the side and told me, hey, big boy, I don't want you to bring them. I don't, want you to, I don't want you to be here to move them over. I want you to be here to bring them in. The rest is history. And then I was lucky enough to play for two guys named Terry Francona, who have at the time a guy named John Farrell as a pitching coach who took over as a manager. These guys, they did nothing but build my confidence, even that through tough time. I love you guys, and I don't know, I always gonna have you guys in my heart. Tito, whatever you are, man, you know Papi got you. John as well. To all my former, to all my former teammates here today showing love, I gotta start with the twins, man. Hell of Famer Paul Molitor, who taught me well when I was with the Twins. La Troy Hawkins, Eddie Wardado, Cody Koski, Jack Young, Tori Horner, Matt Lawton, Brad Rackey, all those guys, man, got my back when I played for the Twins. I love you guys, man, for the, from the bottom of my heart. And I also got teammates right here, Los Chicos Locos, Johnny Damon, Mikey Lowe, Dustin Pedroia, Track Nissen, Jason Varite, Tim Wayfield, Kevin Euclid, and of course, number 45. I want you guys to know that even with the God-given talent that I have, I don't think I would have made it without the support and love coming from all of you. All I was trying to do, it was bringing team together. That started with honesty and openness. My smaller teammate, where he at, Pedroia? 
Pee Wee. Pee Wee grabbed me by the neck one time. And he told me, if you keep on pulling the ball, I'm gonna whoop you. <laughs> and guess what? Big Papi got caught up on fire. <laughs> My teammates always were there for me. And that's something that I always gonna appreciate. And in life, remember, our teammates are our second family. Love you guys, man, forever. Oh, I for, I, wait, 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 wait. I can forget about Jason Veritek. That man is serious. I love you, Cap. It's been almost 20 years since my first day in Boston. We have some incredible memories. When I think about Boston, I definitely think about 2004, 2007, and of course, 2013. After the city was shaken, by a marathon bombing, I had never seen a community bounce back and reunite like Boston. When I think about Boston, I also think about the last game I played, standing on that field at Fenway Park. It feels like the whole city of New England and each one and every one of you was surrounding me and was showing me all your love. I will always be Boston, and I will always be there for you, Boston. I love you, Boston. <laughs> mi mamá y mi papá fueron dos gente que a nosotros nos criaron con mucho esfuerzo. Mi mamá era una mujer joseadora, trabajadora, una mujer incansable que siempre quería darle a los hijos suyos lo mejor. Igual que papi, papi siempre sin poder se fajaba con nosotros, conmigo y mis hermanas, a meter mano como sea. Tipo, a lo primero, el primer juguete que me regaló, me acuerdo que fue un bate y una pelota. Y, la, y, el, y digo, un guante y un bate. Y el guante era para uno que juegue, si todo, ya tú sabes la vuelta. <ríe> no había guante zurdo por esos tiempos. Se sacrificó mucho para darnos lo mejor y lo más importante, siempre trató de enfocarnos en lo que se llama la educación. Papi y mami salían y hacían lo imposible para que yo y mi hermana tuviéramos una vida mejor que ellos. Y eso se lo agradeceré siempre en el alma. Cada vez que daba un honrón miraba hacia el cielo, solamente dedicándole todo a mi mamá, porque mami lo era todo para mí. Te amo, papi. Tú lo sabes. Te amo, mami, donde quiera que Dios te tenga. I always try to live my life in a way that supports others, that make a positive influence in the world. And if my story can remind you of anything, let it remind you that when you believe in someone, you can change their world. You can change their future just like so many people who believe in me. To everyone that believe in me, from my family, to coaches, to teammates, to fans, no, I could not have done this without you. My Hall of Fame plaque represents each, each, each one of you. And I'm gonna thank you guys for the rest of my life. Thank you very much and God bless you all. Quiero mi gente, lo amo. Que viva la República Dominicana, eh? Y lo veo en el party ahorita, en la cervecería, lo quiero mucho.